Hello everyone and welcome back to this fourth class of shear force and bending moment diagram. In our previous classes, we have seen that how to make the shear force bending moment diagram. For example, a cantilever beam with one point load or multiple point load. In this session, we are going to introduce the uniformly distributed load. So here in this picture, you can see that this is a cantilever beam and we are having a uniformly distributed load of intensity W Newton per meter spreading across the entire length of this cantilever beam. So for such cases, how to make the shear force and bending moment diagram, we are going to learn particularly for this class. First, we will focus on the shear force diagram and later on we will see the bending moment. So let's start with this problem that this is our problem statement where the beam is having of the intensity of load is let's consider 10 Newton per meter and I'm interested to find the shear force at point A, shear force at point B as well as the variation of shear force while I am changing my position from point B to point A. Before I start, let me remind you our sign convention. In case of a downward load, the shear force will be considered as negative. In for upward load, it will be positive. At the same time, we start making our shear force diagram from the extreme right condition and then we will move towards the left side. Such convention we have already practiced in our previous classes. So here, let's start thus making shear force first for point B. If you will recall the previous cases where we were having a simple point load and we are interested to find the shear force at that point itself. So there we have considered that the shear force will be equal to this load acting at this point. For example, if the load is acting of 8 Newton, my shear force at this point will be minus 8 Newton. But when I will compare the uniformly distributed load Actually, in the uniformly distributed load, we calculate the load by multiplying this distance. For example, if I am having a uniformly distributed load, let's for the 2 meter span and the intensity of load is let's 20 Newton per meter. That means the entire load over this span is what? 2 meter multiplied by 20. So I can replace this uniformly distributed load with an amount of 40 Newton load. But the position of the 40 Newton will be at the center of this length. Here, if I am interested to find the shear force at point B, since it is a point and I am starting my uniformly distributed load, so practically the shear force at point B will be of 0 Newton. But as I will move, towards point A, the shear force is going to be increased with respect to the distance. For example, I am interested to find the shear force at a distance x. So my shear force for distance x will be what? The value of intensity and as it is acting in the downward direction, I am going to put a negative sign here and then I have to multiply it with the x distance. So for any distance which is at distance x from the point, the shear force will be defined by this expression and you can see here that the shear force is proportional to x. As I am increasing the distance, the shear force is going to be increased. When I will reach to the a value, my x will become what? x will become equal to the 4 meter. So in case of point A, the shear force will be what? minus 10 into 4 that will be minus 40 Newton. If I will make the distribution of shear force, let this is my beam A, B. Upward will consider it as a positive shear force. Downward is as negative shear force. And my shear force at point B is 0. When I am reaching at point A, the shear force is becoming minus 40. And how the distribution is there? This is a linear curve because it is proportional to x. That means this line is going to be represent the shear force variation when I am moving from point B towards point A. So this is the shear force diagram for this simple problem. Let's take another problem where the uniformly distributed load is not for the entire length of the beam. Here I am showing that load is distributed up to a length of 4 meter from point B to point C only and the intensity of load is 8 Newton per meter. So here I am going to make the shear force point C, shear force at point B, shear force at point A and in between these points. 
as i have already seen that the shear force at point c will be what shear force at point c will be zero then the shear force for any given distance between point c to b means i am going to consider a value of x and i will write that what is the shear force for x distance as the intensity is of 8 newton shear force will become what minus 8 into x and this expression is valid till point b so if i am interested to find the shear force at point b my x will become what the x will become 4 so the shear force at point b will be what minus 8 into 4 that will be minus 32 newton if i will make the distribution here when i am at point c the shear force will be zero and the shear force is gradually increasing and reaching to a magnitude of 30 new 32 newton when i am reaching to point b beyond point b there is no additional load that means whatever shear force is up to point b will remain same that means shear force for a distance from b to a will remain minus 32 newton and when i am reaching at point a again it will be minus 32 newton but when i will reach a there will be a reaction that is again of magnitude 32 please i am not going to say how to calculate this reaction if you are interested go back and check my previous video but this reaction is ultimately going to tell you that what would be the value of the shear force at the end so that you can cross check your answer so from point b to a there is no variation in the shear force so my line will remain a straight line and when i am reaching at point b as we have done in the previous cases the shear force diagram will be closed and why it is closing because of this reaction so this is the distribution of shear force for this given beam i believe that when i am i will solve this last problem the concept of making the shear force for the uniformly distributed load will be more concrete here we are interested to find the shear force at point d shear force at c shear force at b as well as shear force at a as at point d we can see that this point load is acting that means the shear force at d will have a value that is not zero because in the previous case you have seen that at point c the shear force is zero because the uniformly distributed distributive load is starting at this point there is no other load but in the, this problem you can see that this is a 20 newton force is acting at point d that means the shear force at point d will be defined by 20 and the negative sign is indicating that load is acting in the downward direction beyond d if i will move from d to c the uniformly distributive load is there so i am going to consider a value of x and i will write expression for the shear force at any distance x between d to c so this is actually i am writing for a region which is from point d to point c and my expression will be what minus 20 is there and minus 8 into x newton this expression is valid till point c so when i will reach at point c my x will be what the x will be of value 2 that means the shear force at point c will be minus 20 minus 8 into 2 that will be what minus 36 newton if i will draw the shear force distribution the shear force at d will be of magnitude 20 so let's make this this is my 20 value beyond d when i am reaching to point c the shear force is increasing and this increment is of magnitude 16 so the entire shear force at this point will be 36 when i am reaching at point c there is another point load of magnitude 10 newton and it is acting at this point that means i have to add a value of 10 newton at c point itself so this 36 is going to be changed by an amount of 10 and ultimately the shear force at c will become minus 46 so here the shear force will increase by an amount of 10 again so this change is of value 10 and beyond this again the uniformly distributed load is there so we have to make another x consideration we are now going to ignore the previous x and we are going to make second x consideration you may also consider the x1 x2 x3 but 
it doesn't make any difference even when you will see the book you will find they are also taking the x value so here i am going to write the expression instead of b first i am going to write the expression for any distance x between c to b so my shear force will be what now minus 20 because the minus 20 is from the beginning so minus 20 will be there minus 10 will be there in addition to these two load the shear force because of this much uniformly distributed load will be there so my shear force will minus 8 into x and when i am reaching at b the x value will be 4 so the shear force at b will be what the shear force at b will be minus 30 minus 8 into 4 that means it will be 62 newton negative so here when i will draw the shear force distribution the shear force is again going to be increased and till this point the shear force was 46 when i am reaching here the total shear force will be of magnitude 62 beyond this point there is no additional load is acting in this region from b to a that means the shear force will remain constant so i can directly say that the shear force from b to a will remain minus 62 even at point a the shear force will be minus 62 but when i will reach at point a i know that there will be reaction and you can cross check if you will calculate the reaction you will find that the reaction is also 62 and this is your verification when you will reach to the end and if you have done any mistake whatever value you will find at the end will not match with the reaction and if it is matching that means whatever you have done is correct and at the end you are going to close your shear force diagram because this upward reaction so this is the entire shear force diagram for the given problem and i believe if you understood the philosophy of making shear force diagram for these three problem which are the three problem this is my first problem where there is only one uniformly distributive load in the second case we have partially distributed load and in the third case we are having a uniformly distributed load along with the point load with this note i am closing this session in the next class we will talk about the bending moment of a cantilever beam with a uniformly distributed load thank you